36 hours, that's all you've got. Or $1 billion is gone. This was the exact scenario facing Sue Dyer. Do you remember the catastrophic earthquake during the 1989 World Series in San Francisco? We saw harrowing images of destruction, including the collapse of the Cypress Freeway. In the aftermath, $1 billion had been allocated by the federal government to rebuild the freeway. However, that money would disappear if a rebuilding agreement was not in place by the deadline. The California Department of Transportation understood that all of the intellect and logic they had been leading with to negotiate this deal was not working. There had been almost four years of fighting between five different stakeholder groups, and they were at a stalemate. A radically different kind of leadership was required to avert disaster. The head of Caltrans reached out to Sue Dyer, a renowned organizational consultant known for her trust-based partner model. He said, if this works, Sue, you will be the hero. If this doesn't work, you will be the scapegoat. Are you up for that? She was, and in the 11th hour, her leadership helped them tap into the shared values of their communities and to see each other's viewpoints with compassion despite being fierce competitors only days before. Here, you had an environment ruled by old leadership styles, built primarily upon intellect and logic, and still a new agreement was created. A billion dollars in funding secured, the Cypress Freeway rebuilt, and the community of West Oakland revived because all parties were committed to an agreement they helped to co-create. Sue and the stakeholders accomplished in three days what couldn't be done in four years because she shared with them a different way to lead with a higher level of wisdom. I am here to tell you about this way of leadership. It's leveraging your head, heart, and gut when making decisions. I call this full capacity thinking. Full capacity thinking delivers well-balanced and integrity-aligned outcomes for businesses and stakeholders without sacrificing the bottom line. Every leader wants to be effective and to make impact, but to be effective, we have to reimagine leadership. Our problems require a different level of wisdom. Reimagine a blended solution, not an either-or. The new leadership paradigm leverages all three brains, head, heart, and gut, ready for us to access today. Let me ask you a question. What are you doing to evolve your leadership? My leadership transformation started on June 3rd, 2020. I was home working due to COVID, as many of us were. The news cycle was consumed with civil unrest in this country following the murders of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. I opened my laptop, and there was a threatening and totally unexpected email. It was from a large investor in the winery group that I was president of and an owner. The email was sent to the four members of our executive team, myself and three men, but it was only addressed to me. It said, Dear Jill, how dare you post in support of Black Lives Matter? This political post will damage me personally and professionally. If you don't take it down, I will ask for your resignation. And if that doesn't work, I will hire attorneys to sue our own company. Reading that email, it felt like I had been punched in the gut. How could the statement of support be seen as divisive? We had a diversity of investors, employees, and customers, so I knew putting this post up was the right thing to do. And I was proud to lead our efforts on this important issue. That email got me asking, what else could I do as a leader in the wine industry to be part of the solutions that I want to see? It's my nature when things get tough, 
to find solutions, to get into action. My voice has always been instrumental to my success. I was a catcher at the University of California at Berkeley, go Bears! <laughs> and brought up in a Jewish family and taught the principle of tikkun olam, which is to repair the world and leave it better than you found it. I've been on the front line of many social and racial justice fights, so using my voice isn't new to me. But I had become tamed in this industry, steeped in tradition and dominated by men. And I had lost my voice. And the dis-ease in my body was palpable. And I had normalized it. I thought, this is what it means to be a leader and to own a business. Can any of you relate? This experience led me to reach out to Dr. Brenda Wade, psychologist, life coach, and former hard brain scientist, to help me with the struggle that I was experiencing. When I shared with her about the pain in my stomach and the tightening in my throat and discomfort in my chest, she revealed the science that substantiates our three brains, head, heart, and gut. It was clear that the dis-ease in my body was my heart and gut brains communicating with me. These physical manifestations were my heart and gut talking to me. And as leaders, we must pay attention to these indicators and recognize them as a wake-up call. This is nothing new when you consider thousands of years in Eastern and Western history of spiritual practices. Leaders understood the power of integrating body, mind, emotion, and spirit, and utilizing all in their decision-making and advising. There's value in questioning the old operating system that says brilliance only comes from using your head. We all know the power of intuition, especially the women in this room. And if we're going to be healthier as leaders and organizations, we must also include our heart. So let's talk about these three brains in more detail. Neuroscience tells us that all three brains are able to receive, process, and store information, making it accessible when needed. In fact, each brain has a number of functions that it specializes in better than the other two. Our head brain, it's great for thinking, cognitive perception, making meaning of things. It's the seat of creativity. Our heart brain, it's meant to take the lead on emotional processing, on values, on our connections with others. It's the source of passion and compassion. And our gut brain is designed to focus on our sense of self, self-preservation. It's the root of courage. So let, let's look at these brains in more detail. All of us are more, most familiar with our head brain. And of course, great leaders wouldn't be wise to abandon all intellect and logic, but too often, we are disconnected from our head or our heart brain, or our head vetoes the messages coming from our heart and our gut. Conventional wisdom says, best made decisions are done rationally with lots of thoughtful analysis and data. We've been taught that gut instinct should not play a part or emotions of the equation. And sure, operating from this old system can still produce good outcomes. But as you've heard in the story that I shared with you today, the, both stories, it can often be problematic. When I was talking and learning about the head brain, I started to question and rethink everything in my personal and professional life. I began to recognize the gaps in my thinking because I was leaving my heart and gut at the door on most days in my old company. And in my experience, in my opinion, those are the best part of me. 
It was full capacity thinking that informed my decision to leave my former company and to build Tenoral Cellars. I began making tangible decisions to build a company that would represent the industry's largest customer, women. Decisions that included a business model that gives back to organizations that empower women and fight for gender and ra racial justice. A strategy to attract investors that would appeal to a beautiful rainbow of women. Recruiting a team with a diversity of voices and experiences to inform how we operate. And securing women and minority-owned vendors as well. All of these intentional decisions felt in alignment and integrity with my head, heart, and gut because I accessed full capacity thinking instead of operating solely in my head. So then we've got the gut. Our gut is the first brain to fire. It sends signals to every cell in our body. Our gut tells us everything we need to know. For example, in my decision-making process in building Teneral Cellars, the instinct to hire women and minority-owned vendors and suppliers came from the gut. And when I weighed in with my heart and my head, the decision felt in alignment. And that leads me to talk about the heart again. What's love got to do with it? <laughs> Everything. Remember, our heart is meant to take the lead on emotional processing, on values, on our connections with others. It's a source of passion and compassion. Emotions show up in negotiations with how teams work together, with the culture of a company, and so many other aspects of business. Remember the story about the Cypress Freeway. Before they brought Sue Dyer in to lead, you had many head brains and egos fighting for their own interests, blocking the path to collaboration. But when they tapped into their hearts, they were able to balance the needs of others with their own, creating a win-win. Look, if the world and the state of our world has taught us anything, it's that we must reimagine more comprehensive leadership in light of these three brains designed for wisdom-informed decision-making. We have to pause and allow our heart and our gut brains to weigh in with as much influence as our head and intellect. Here are three simple things you can begin doing today to reprogram your old operating system and to tap into full capacity thinking. One, reevaluate your beliefs and tired patterns and give yourself permission to evolve your leadership approach. Two, make this a daily practice. This has to become the conscious and intentional way you show up. And three, pause. Pause and check in with all three brains before making a decision and standardize this process in your organizations. Everything around us is evolving. Just look at nature, AI, and humanity as examples of our natural predisposition to evolve. Leadership and business systems must do the same. When you tap into full capacity thinking, you know you are making decisions for every stakeholder. I challenge each of you to transform your leadership, to evolve as a human, and fully express the highest version of yourself with every decision that you make. When you draw upon the collective wisdom of the head, heart, and gut, you invite everyone around you to use full capacity thinking and to deliver 
their unique contributions as well. Leading fully is the new bottom line for better profits, impact, innovation, diversity, cultures of inclusivity and belonging, and dare I say, love. Thank you.